Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL tutorial with Lana at NoStar. Today we have an interesting topic because we are going to discuss some SQL tips which will help you to solve complex SQL queries. Now this video is more targeted towards intermediate to advanced SQL queries. So that level we will be doing another video for advanced SQL queries. So there will be tips for most advanced SQL queries. Uh, if you want a video for beginner SQL queries as well, then please do let us know in the comments below and we can do a video at a beginner level as well. So in this video, the focus will be on discussing the SQL tips and we will be showing you example SQL queries that go along with it and we'll be executing them and explaining them as well but for more detailed explanations I will be putting down the links in the description box and you can also go to those links and understand what exactly is happening so let's get started and the very first one which many of you might already be aware of is to use Windows function to put any kind of ranking order in your data the most common example is to find the employees with the second highest or the nth highest salary. So second, third or whatever number. Now this can also be achieved using nested subqueries, but that will make your query complicated. And the best way to go about this is to use Windows function. So this is a very common example from the employee database where we are finding the query. You can see the query. We are going to use a rank function. There are different ranking functions. You can use row number as well. And there is a function called dense rank as well. So depending on your requirements, you can use the ranking functions and just use the partition by order by clause to indicate your salary order and then just filter on that column. So if you want third highest salary, you can filter on three and so on. And it will give you the results, the third highest salary in each department. And the second tip is regarding the calculation of running totals, rolling sum, averages, etc. In this case also, we need to use the Windows function. Windows function will not group by your data in the output, which means there will be the same number of records in the output as are present in the input. Now, in this case, we can just use a sum function over here on whatever column you need. So we have some inventory data over here. We are calculating the rolling total or the running total for the inventory data based on the transaction date. So if I run this query over here, I get the running total as an additional column for each of those input data records. And you can see that the running total is the sum of the value of the quantity for the current record plus the quantity of the previous records. The next step is again related to the Windows function and it is accessing the previous and next records in your data. So if you have a requirement where you want to find out or you want to do a comparison with the previous quarters or previous month sale, then you can use the Windows function lag and lead. Now lead is a function which will give you the value of the next record and lag is a function which will give you a value of the previous record. So you have to first order by your data in a certain order and based on that ordering key, you can find out the lead and lag records. Now in this example again we have used the inventory table and we are finding out the lag and lead quantities. So this is most valid when you have historical data because for current data you won't really have a future quantity but this is just an example to illustrate the use of lead and lag function. So you can see over here uh, I can put this down. We just need to use these two functions lag and lead and use our windows uh, syntax and then we have the if we run this query right over here you can see that the previous quantity if available will be displayed if it is not available it will be null and similarly for the next quantity or the future quantity it will if it is not available the output will be null but this is a very common scenario in finance world when the reports need to be generated you need to do year to year calculations year to year growth or month to monthly comparisons or last month's growth and etc so this is where you need to use again the windows function lead and lag and the next step is regarding the identification of hierarchies in your data. So whether it's an employee manager hierarchy or whether it's a family tree or a bill of materials that you want to generate, then we can use these approaches. There are basically two approaches. The first one is a simple approach for a simple level hierarchy. So maybe just a one level hierarchy. You can go for a self join. So if you just want to find out the employee manager hierarchy, so just a one level hierarchy, you can just create two aliases 
alias of the employees table do a join between them and compare the manager id from one alias to the employee id of the another alias so if we execute this query right over here you will get that relationship but if you want to find out the complete level of hierarchy then we have to go for the recursive cte's so for recursive CTEs, you have to first declare the CTE. You, there will be two parts in the CTE. There will be a base condition where you calculate the top level manager. And then there is another loop which goes on till there are no more records in that hierarchy. So you have to specify a termination condition as well. And then you can just do a select from that recursive CTE and you will get the complete level hierarchy. So if we execute this query, you will get a kind of a tree structure. So you will see that Bruce Miller is the topmost manager. And then you have two managers under him, Brad Smith and Tom Lee. And then they have different employees under them. So this is the complete level of hierarchy that you will get using a recursive CTE. The next step is regarding the identification of pairs in your data or if you want to create pairs in your data. Now we take the example of this department table. Let's say we want to create a pair with each department for each department with every other department. So it's the most a common example is generating a match schedule. Let's say they are working as two teams and now we want to create a match schedule for every team competing with every other team. So in that case, again, we need to go back to the concept of self join. So we create two aliases of the same table and join on the same department ID. Now we have to make sure when we are identifying pairs that we have a condition as greater than or less than so that we do not get the reverse pairs which means a pair of one two and two one which is essentially the same thing so India England and England India which is essentially the same match right so to eliminate that we have to make sure that we use this condition of greater than or less than and not just a not equal to condition the next step is regarding the creation of sequence of data so if you want to create a sequence of numbers going from 1 to 50 or if you want to create a sequence of dates a date range going from maybe the first of the month till the 15th of the next month or whatever is your criteria even a sequence of al alphabets going from a to z or a to c whatever is your requirement you have to use a concept of recursive cte so recursive cte as we have already seen earlier in this you have an anchor query which will select the base value so the very first value of your sequence and then you just need a union all and you do your increment and define a termination condition so this CD is going to generate let's see how many numbers so if we execute this you will see that 10 rows will be generated because the termination condition over here has been defined as count less than 10. So in this case, 10 records will be generated. So you can change this number if you want to generate till 50. And if you want to execute this query, you will have 50 rows generated as you can see over here. So there will be 50 numbers generated. You can use the same concept for creating the date ranges or alphabetic sequences as well. Now there are other methods as well. So there's a table called master.spt underscore values table that can also be used for creating a sequence of numbers and in some ways creating a sequence of alphabets and so on so that is another method but most commonly used especially for date ranges would be the recursive cde the next step is doing a conditional count on your data. So if you want to do a count on your data based on certain condition, for example, let's say you want to count only the records which have some flex that is N or X, and you want to have all the rows in the output as well. So you just do not want the count, but you want all the rows in the output as well, and you have many conditions. So you want uh, to have multiple counts, one with flag NX, one with some other values, with some other condition, and so on. So in that case, you do not have to use the count function. What you can do is use a combination of sum and case. So in case you will specify your condition. For example, here, what we are doing is we are doing two counts, one for all those employees whose salaries are greater than 100,000 and one for all those employees whose salaries are greater than equal to 50,000 but less than 100,000. 
So now what we have to do in the case, we have to specify a condition case when salary is greater than 100,000, then you have to set the output to one. If the case, if the condition is not satisfied, you have to set the output to zero. Then you have to do a sum on that. So whenever your condition is satisfied, the output will be set to one. And for all those records which satisfy the condition, the output would be set to one. And then if you do a sum on those records, then all the ones will be summed up. So in effect, it will give you the count of those records which have, which meet that condition. So if you run this query right here, we will get for different departments, we will get the two ranges, so the two counts over here. So you can have multiple output columns having the counts using this particular tip. The next tip is regarding the very useful values clause in SQL. It's a table value constructor and it can be used to generate table values for your join conditions, your select conditions, your insert conditions, and so on. So let's say you have one record and you want to have five matches for every record in your input data with some certain values like A, B, C, D, or A, E, I, O, U, the vowel values. So for every one record, you want to have five matches in the output, then you can do this simply by using, by creating a table using the values clause. And this is a syntax for creating the table using the values clause. So we have to say select, and we have to give a column name from, and then within brackets, we have to specify the values using the values clause as my table, so any table name you can give and that column name that we have specified over here. So here you can use this as a subquery and then do a join with your primary source of data. And for every single record, then you will have five output records in your data. So if I execute this, you will see that data is generated in a column called A and this data is generated. Now you can also use it to have multiple columns in your data. So you just have to specify those two column names here. So A, B from, again, in brackets, you have to use the values clause, and then you have to give within brackets all the values separated by commas and a table name and two columns. So if I execute this, I will get the two values. Now this is very helpful. Earlier, there was an approach that we can do this using the union all. So you can write select, a, union all select E, union all select I, union all select O, and so on. But we don't need to do that. We can use the values table constructor and make a job easy. And this can be used for cross joins. There are various requirements for complex queries. Sometimes the requirements of having a cross join, as I mentioned earlier, for every single record, you need to create multiple records in the output and so on. So this can be very effectively used. So these were some of the tips that would help you to solve intermediate to complex SQL queries. We have another video coming up for ad tips for advanced SQL queries. So we'll be posting that soon as well. Uh, thanks again for watching and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.